Another five-minute mystery. Hello, Lieutenant. Now, there you are, Mr. Campbell. I've been waiting for you very anxiously since your call. I hurried down here as fast as I could. Mr. Campbell, if your evidence can give me a clue to the identity of Mr. Martin's killer, we'll break this case wide open. Lieutenant, it's not an easy thing for me to bear. First, my partner was killed, and now with this photograph I'm putting on your desk, I condemn as the murderer... His wife? Good heavens! Why didn't you show me this sooner? I thought you might suspect her and solve the case, and I would have been able to remain silent. Look at this picture. It's the perfect evidence. His body on the floor in front of the couch, and she leaning over him, with a gun still in her hand. Why, this will send her to the chair. I know. It wasn't easy for me to give it to you. How on earth did you ever get it? Well, I had an appointment with my partner at a little after 11 p.m. at his house. Mm -hmm. When I came up the walk, I was surprised to see that the house was dark. You see, you must pass the large bay window in the living room when coming up the walk. The room was very dark, but by the faint light from some burning coals in the fireplace, I could see Mr. Martin's body lying in front of the large couch. You could? Yes. I saw my partner's wife come into the room. She had a gun in her hand. Well, how did you get the picture? Well, I've always been a camera enthusiast. I happened to have a small box camera with me, and without her noticing me, I took a picture of the room. It's really a remarkable photograph. I've kept it hidden for several days, but when you found no trace of the murderer, I decided that you would have to have it. I'm glad you did, Mr. Campbell. It isn't exactly safe to withhold evidence, but now we have it, and it looks like the Martin case is closed. Yes? Mr. Campbell, there's a gentleman from the police department to see you. Oh, send him in. Always glad to help the police. Well, hello, Lieutenant. It's good to see you. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Campbell. It's about the Martin case. Oh, but I thought the case was closed. You've arrested Mrs. Martin, haven't you? Yes, but there are some points about the case that still puzzle me. Really? But you have the evidence in black and white. Mm, But have I? Will a jury accept the picture? You've heard of process shots, haven't you? No, I don't believe I have. You're lying, Mr. Campbell. That picture you gave me was a phony. And I can prove that your whole expedition that night was a contrived fairy tale. How does the police lieutenant know that Campbell lied in his story? In just a moment, we'll know, but first... And now, back to our story. Mr. Campbell, you don't think I fell for that story about your being a camera hound and accidentally being on the spot for the picture of the year, do you? For if you were a photographer, as you claim, you'd know that the feeble light from a dying fire is hardly enough with which to take a picture in a darkened room. If you'd used a flash, she would have seen you, but that was impossible, because she wasn't even in that room. But you were, Mr. Campbell, and you killed your partner and dummied up this fake picture to throw a blame on his wife. Snap judgment's supposed to be a dangerous thing, Campbell. You proved it. State Police. You the fellow that put in the call? Yes, Sergeant. My name is Tony Blake. I run this gas station. Let's have the details on the shooting. Uh, It's pretty lonely out here in this mountain road at night with just an occasional car or two going by, so I always keep my radio turned on. And you got the announcement of the gas station killing at Fremont Valley. Yeah. The minute it came over the radio, I had a hunch the killer would be heading this way. What did you do then? I set myself out in the road with my rifle. When did he come along? About 15 minutes after I heard the news on the radio. I heard the sound of a high-powered car moving very fast around Carton's Peak. That's about a half a mile from here. Yeah. Well, that told me he'd be here in about half a minute. When the car came around the bend, I began waving my arms for him to stop. He had me caught square in the glare of his light, so I lifted up my gun. What happened then, Blake? He slowed down and had almost stopped in front of me when I saw him lift a gun behind the wheel. I fired immediately. The car started to swerve, and before I could stop it, it went down the road and tumbled off the cliff. What type of car was it, Blake? It was a four-door sedan. You sure? Well, of course. Why? The car the killer got away in was a two-door sedan. It's a pretty bad smasher. You recognize the man behind the seat? I shined a light on his face, Inspector. Good heavens! What's wrong, Blake? This is Charlie Thompson, the man for whom I leased my gas station. Well, I'll tell you the truth. I have nothing to hide. It was an accident. I, I thought he was the killer. There is a gun on the front seat. Yeah, he always carried one. Afraid of being robbed, he used to tell me. After you heard the news flash about the killer being loose, you're certain that no other cars passed? Definitely. 
Did you phone right after the wreck occurred? Yeah, I didn't stop to investigate the crack-up. I wanted to stake police here right away. You notice the way his head is lying against the wheel? Yeah. The bullet passed right through his forehead. It's a good shot. I thought I was shooting a murderer. You got that reversed, Blake. You mean a murderer was shooting. I'm arresting you for the killing of Charlie Thompson. What contradiction did Tony Blake's story contain that proved it to be a lie? In just a moment, we'll know, but first... And now, back to our story. You're crazy, Sergeant. I tell you, it was an accident. Her story told me it was deliberate murder. Don't you recall you said you were caught in the glare of the car's headlights? If that were true, how could you have possibly been able to see into the car's darkened interior and detect the driver raising a gun? Well, I thought I saw it. Oh, Blake, that story of the killer on the radio was just a good excuse for you to deliberately kill Charlie Thompson after you and he argued about his taking the gas station back from you. You shot him and then let his car roll over the cliff. Unfortunately for you, you threw too much light on the subject. Another five minutes. Bill. Hmm? Bill, what's the matter? You scarcely said a word all the way home. What do you want me to say? Just that we're still friends. That everything will be just the same in spite of the in fact... In spite of the fact that you've changed your mind about marrying me? Oh, Bill, please. It's just that I need more time. Isn't it better to make sure now? That we're married it would be too late. But how can a girl... Oh, well, I, I guess I can take it. And here's my house. Is this going to be our last goodbye? Oh, Bill, it's not that bad. We're still going to be the same... Eat the whole... Hey, Stockers, stick him up. What? Bill! Hand over your wallet, fella, and that purse, lady. Hey, what's this all about? Don't mind your talk, buddy. Just lose your toes. Lady, I'll kick at you. Have you had my ring? Please, I please. said... <laughs> and that's how it happened, Inspector. He just stepped off the curb out of nothing, listen. And before I knew what had happened, he'd shot her. It was terrible, Inspector. When I got to the car, my... Daughter was dead. Well, how soon after the shot did Mr. Larson ring your bell, Mrs. Kay? Oh, it was a very short time. Uh, tell me exactly what happened after that. Well, Bill was standing there white as a ghost. He muttered something to me. Something like, Mrs. Kay, Helen's been shot. Call the police. And uh, you did? I made the call, Inspector, and Mrs. Kay ran out to the car. At first, I, I couldn't believe that she was really dead. She just seemed to be sitting there, quiet like in the car. Even when I opened the car door... You mean there was no sign of a wound? I didn't see it at first. I started to take her hand and speak to her. It was already cold. And then I saw a pool of blood in the middle of the front seat. and knew she was dead. Please, Inspector, I think Mrs. Kay is taking just about as much of this questioning as she can take. I'm all right, dear. I won't rest until this whole thing is settled. Until the man who murdered my daughter is behind bars. I understand how you feel, Mrs. Kay. And I'm happy to say I don't think you'll have too long to wait. Uh, what do you mean, Inspector? You mean they found some clues? Not only clues, Mr. Larson. We've found the murderer. It's been right under our nose the whole time. Are you trying to be funny at a time like this? Hardly, Mr. Larson. What do you mean by that statement, then? Just this, Mr. Larson. I'm arresting you for the murder of Miss Helen Kay. How did Inspector Clark know that Bill Larson had murdered Helen Kay? Do you know the clue? In a moment, we'll hear, but first... And now, back to our mystery. Mr. Larson, you were insanely jealous over that girl. When she told you that she had fallen for someone else, you couldn't take it. Besides, your fake story had a hole in it a mile wide. You said that the murderer stepped off the curb while the car was parked in front of Helen's house. That would be on Helen's side of the car. But Mrs. K testified, and I can verify it myself, that the blood stains were in the middle of the seat. If the shot had come from Helen's side of the car, as you said... The bullet wound would have been on the right side near her door and not in the middle of the seat, the side nearest you. Come on, Larson. You're going for another ride. But this one will be your last. 